Oh, that's sick. Hi, I'm Dean. This is my 15112 term project, CancerCAD. CancerCAD is a medical imaging tool to help doctors and patients understand the three dimensional characteristics of tumors using only two dimensional image data, which is essentially just MRIs. If you want to run this, you can go to the GitHub and you can just download the dependencies. Most of them are easy to install aside from OpenCV, but the instructions are listed there. The brain folder in this GitHub has all the images I'll be using throughout the video, so if you want to follow along, by all means feel free. The main features of this program are polygon drawing over cancer images, where a doctor would go in and use this program to draw a polygon over every slice of cancer, and then that gets built up in 3D, as you can see by this multicolored graph. Additionally, the program has intelligent cancer detection, which uses OpenCV's blob detector to find the cancer by itself and then extract the coordinates. Feel free to follow along. You can clone this or download the repo and have fun. So once you get this repo either installed or cloned or whatever, just run the main.py file and that'll open up a GUI interface in TK Inter. There's only three buttons to click and the help screen essentially says it all. Just follow the instructions on each page and you should be good to go. So we're going to build up this cancer manually first. Browse for the JPEGs you want to use. For you, it'll just be the brain folder, so it should be wherever you downloaded this repository. And I have the same pictures here, just in a different folder name. So then now what we want to do is select the coordinates of each slice of cancer. So as I said earlier, you're going to be drawing polygons over the cancer. Ideally, a doctor would do this in a 10 to 15 minute time span. I won't do all of them, um, but it's a pretty simple process. You can undo, you can redo, you can draw the coordinates, and then when you're done with one image, click Escape. It'll highlight it in green, and then you go to the next one. So we're only going to do two here, just because the process is very simple. Um, but as you can see, this is something that a doctor would want to take time to make sure it's precise, because when they build it up in 3D, it's meaningful to have the most accurate 3D model possible. So you go through every image, and then you can print your polygons to ensure that they've been transferred. It's essentially a 2D list of points, and you can see that there's a lot of empty 1D lists in here, because it was expecting polygon data, but we didn't give it any. So then we can construct the mesh, we first update the polygons, then we're going to create the triangularized mesh. It's going to show up here as a bunch of triangles essentially, just different colors meshed together. This isn't very meaningful because we only went through two slices, but as you'll see later, if you go through every single slice, you can build up something that's pretty easy to understand and look at. And then you can save it as an STL. If we open up this STL in Sublime Text, it really won't be that meaningful. It's just a bunch of letters and numbers. But if you open it up in an STL viewer, like the one that comes standard in many Windows 10 devices, you'll start to see a 3D mesh emerging, um, which you can 3D print and see in your hand. This is only from two image slices. So when you look at it with all of the image slices, you know, maybe 50 or 60, the mesh that you're generating is very useful. When you 3D print it, it's life size, you can feel it, you can look at it and really understand what's inside the patient's body, and that is useful. So that was the manually constructed 3D object. If we go to the intelligently identified glioblastoma, it's the same process as the manually identified one. Give it the JPEG directory that you'd like, then it'll intelligently figure out where the blobs are using OpenCV's blob detector, and then it'll extract the coordinates from those blobs and put it into a list. Then what you can do is update the mesh and you can print these polygons. And you can see here that this is the exact same data structure as the polygons in the manually created mesh. It's just that now these are a lot more precise because the computer is generating them and there's a lot more decimal places. So the mesh that's constructed here is not actually that indicative of what the 3D object looks like. When you take a look at the 3D object, which is generated the exact same way, you notice a lot of similarities between the intelligently generated STL and the manually generated STL if the doctor went through every single slice. You can see that the 3D printed objects are pretty similar in size, they have a similar shape, and this is good for the doctor because that means that they can cross check their own observations with the computer's observations and know that the cancer is somewhere in between the two of them. So that's CancerCAD. I'd like to thank my mentor Lucas for helping me out with this. I'd like to also thank instructors David Cosby and David Anderson for helping me plan out the high level structure of this program. I'd also like to thank Alan Kelly for telling me about this idea and encouraging me to pursue it. And lastly, I'd like to thank the guys of the third floor of Stever House at Carnegie Mellon University. More specifically, I'd like to thank Yonner Ming, the legend, for helping me out on Saturday mornings, plan out you know the three-dimensional math for this program. And that's about it. So thank you for watching. Check out the GitHub if you're interested in learning more or want to download or clone this repo. 
Uh, if anyone's interested in working on this over the summer, I'm available. I'd like to work on this and continue expanding the functionality. Um, and additionally, check out the 15-112 term projects. They're all over YouTube for the spring 2017 class. There's a lot of talent at CMU, and there's a lot of kids coming up with a lot of interesting stuff. So with that, thanks for watching, and keep solving tomorrow's problems.